I welcome to the session on CPA, Certified Public Accountant, Financial Accounting and Reporting. In this session, we'll discuss about uh, the basic, uh, you know, the examination blueprints of the FAR, followed by a topic called subsequent events. Financial accounting and reporting is one of the four subjects tested on the CPA exam, along with the auditing and attestation, business environment and concepts, and regulation. Now let us discuss about the design of the exam on financial accounting and reporting. The exam is of four hours in total, in which you have a combination of multiple choice questions and uh, simulations. You'll have a total of 66 multiple choice questions and eight task-based simulations. So when you see the weightage of your marks, uh, or MCQs and the PBS, the marks are equally distributed, which means 50% is allocated to MCQs test slates and the remaining 50% uh, is allocated to PBS. This is the weightage of the marks between MCQ and PBS sessions. The content allocation as per the blueprints of AICPA, um, the content area is classified into four areas, conceptual framework, standard setting, and financial reporting. The allocation weightage is between 25 and 35%. Next comes select financial statement accounts, 30 to 40%, select transactions, 20 to 30% and state and local governments, 5 to 15%. This is the overall weightage on the content allocation of FAR. So always remember that area one and area three need to be heavily concentrated where you get around 60 to you know 70% of the total weightage from these two areas alone. The exam format of FAR, FAR exam is tested in total five testlets, testlet one and testlet two, or MCQ testlets of 33 marks each, 33 questions each, sorry. Uh, the first test split upon completing 32, 33 multiple choice questions, you can take a break uh, in the exam, but the clock runs, which means the time goes on. The moment you submit the test split one, you'll be moved on to second test split of MCQ, and you'll not be allowed to go back to test split one. Test lead two, 33, 33 multiple choice questions. Upon submitting this, you can of course take a break, but as you know, clock runs, so not advisable to take a break here. Test lead three, you will have two task-based simulations and test lead four and five, three task-based simulations. Between Three and four, you can take a break, a standard break where clock stops. So your 15 minutes break is given to you. So you can utilize this break upon, upon submitting test lead three. Yes, better always um, try to take this break during CPA exams between test lead three 
and testlet 4. Testlet 4 has three TBS, task-based simulations, and testlet 5, three TBS. Overall, the simulations are of this three testlets consist of eight TBS. Even you can take a break between four and five, but mostly not advisable to take a break here because you are in the last moment and you will have some kind of, you know, in a mood to complete all the questions. So not advisable to take a break here. Let's uh, discuss about a small topic called subsequent events. What are subsequent events? What adjustments are required for the subsequent events? What is the auditor's duty or responsibility over the subsequent events? Until when the auditor is responsible on subsequent events? What is the management responsibility? What transactions are recorded as subsequent events? Let's discuss in detail. A subsequent events are those which occur after company's year-end period, but before the release of the financial statements. So you have a financial year, Jan, you know, first to thirty-first December. You have audit period after 31st December, you have audit period. Then you got all the, you know, approvals for the financial statements to be issued. Then the financial statements are issued. So one thing you need to know that the January 1st to 31st December is your financial year. And after 31st December, the auditor gets evidence, sufficient evidence to provide his opinion, and he submits the audit report. Then what is the date of this audit report? Before that, you need to keep on informing the auditor from time to time whenever you get some get to know some events of last year, of current year in a sense, between this period. So the auditor will decide that whether any adjustment is required to be you know, adjusted, the financial statements are to be revised or not. Yeah. So for this reason, the events are broadly classified into type one events and type two events. Type one subsequent events, and type two subsequent events. Type one, the events that arise prior to the balance sheet date. Hmm. So it is the time period between Jan 1st and 31st December, these events take place. Type two subsequent events are those which arise after the balance sheet date, after 31st December. So now the question is, whether they need any kind of you know, recognition in the financial statements, do we need to pass some journal entries, need to account them or not? So let's have again a glance on the period for which you need to consider uh, uh, events which are identified to be recognized in the books or just to be presented in the financial statements. So the fiscal year starting, let's say January 1st, a calendar year, and cutoff period is say 31st December, is called reporting period. You have subsequent events because from 31st December until the financial statements are complete and to be assured, whatever the events which you identified are called subsequent events. Now let us see that whether these subsequent events need any adjustment in the financial statements for this reporting period, or we can report in the next year. For this, we will classify these events as 
recognized events and non recognized events adjusting events and non adjusting events recognized events adjusting events these events once you identify need a requirement that the entry is to be passed. You need to post this transaction to the current financial statements. Say for example, you have litigations which are pending of last year and we have identified that that needs to be paid. There's a change in a capital structure, stock dividends, splits, reverse splits, any inventory uh, valuation method is changed from say lower of cost or market to NRV, post-employment benefits, covenant violations, any kind of you know refinancing of short-term borrowings. Let's take a small example. Ace company has an ongoing lawsuit with the competitor regarding the patent violation. Based on the attorney, there's no contingent liability as of the balance sheet date. So we did not record any contingent liability in the last year. And now one month after, the court has ordered the company to pay a $1 million. So this, this uh, you know, verdict has come after the closing of the balance sheet date. But you know, the incident took place in the last year. So let me give an example here. The incident belonged to the last year, January to December. But in the month of January, we came to know that this is to be paid. Yes, it is an adjusting event. It is a recognized event because this issue belongs to last year and we came to know that this is to be paid in the month of January after closing the period. So in this scenario, the management needs to modify the financial statements. How? By recording an expense and recording a liability. So example, the entry goes like this, litigation expenses debit, one million and accrual litigation expenses, 1 million. This needs to be adjusted so that this your financial statements are modified here. Non-adjusting events. You come to know certain information, but we don't need any accounting entries here. Just only we need a disclosure. We don't need any debit and credit. They're called non-recognized events non recognized events like in the in the next period after closing the balance sheet you may come across certain business combinations maybe a call options will be in exercised debt extinguishments free closure of the loans reclassification of the long lived assets like current to long term long term to current held to maturity to f is available for sale securities available for sale securities to held to maturity securities so these are the few examples of non-adjusting entries which need a disclosure in the financial statements, but you don't need any debits and credits. Non-adjusting events, non-recognized events. So whenever you come across any event which takes place after 31st December, it is uh, the responsibility of the auditor to identify, to inquire the management about the, the subsequent events, read the minutes books, board, board resolution minute book, and you come to know certain issues into your you know, attention. You need to see that whether the particular event is a recognized event or non-recognized event, whether it is to be recorded in the books or 
be presented in the footnotes of the financial statements. So when you say that uh, the financial statements are yet to be issued, before that, whether the financial statements are to be modified or not, for this you need to know when we call the financial statements are available to be issued. We got all the information done, we got the format done, and we got all the approvals, then we can say that yes, financial statements are available to be issued. When the financial statements approvals have come and they, they, they've already been distributed to the users, then we call, we call the financial statements are issued. So the moment the audit report is delivered to the, the management, the auditor does not have any active responsibility for any subsequent events. But if anything comes into his uh, you know, attention, he may have to discuss with the management about the impact of the, the subsequent events. So if any subsequent e event which needs to be disclosed or which need to be adjusted in the books, um, that you need to revise your financial statements. If there is an error, if there is a retrospective application, then otherwise just mention in the notes of the financial statements. This is about uh, subsequent events which are classified into type one and type two, recognized and non-recognized events and their treatment in the books of accounts. Hope you understand. We'll see you in the next session. Till then, have a good time.